This is the Deep Elec DP666 receiver. It covers FM, broadcast FM, long wave, medium wave, and short wave. Uh, it doesn't have SSB, so um, if you're thinking of uh, listening to utilities or amateur radio bands, this is not going to be the radio for you. Now, it's possible that the receiver may look slightly familiar to you, or certainly the screen here uh, might. And that's because this receiver is based on the TEF6686 chip. And um, you'll have seen on my channel some time back a review of this uh, TEF6686 receiver. It's the first 6686 chip radio that I had. This one brilliant on band to FM, really good FM DX as radio. Um, but this particular radio was next to useless on shortwave, very, very noisy. And it was totally useless on long and medium wave because of internally generated noise. We're going to see if this is going to be any different. Um, because it's based around the same chipset, obviously. Now, you'll see straight away there's a number of significant differences with this deep elect radio. The most obvious one is the fact that it has a numerical keypad here so we can punch in frequencies. Um, we have um, a label switch for bandwidth mode and band here. There's a red power switch on the front of the radio here, but also underneath the radio. Just here is a uh, main on off switch for the power. So that has to be flipped to the on position before this um, power switch here will work. Obviously we've got a built in speaker. Um, on the side of the radio here we have a, a tuning knob, volume control and a squelch control. Not quite sure why we've got a squelch. Haven't uh, had cause to use that yet but it's there. On the opposite side of the radio, we've got the charging port, it's a USB-C. We've got a headphone socket and a little uh, switch which you can access probably with a little uh, pin or something, a little recess switch there. For um, It's labelled as, um, I'll just bring it into view there properly, it's labelled as uh, ESP32 boot. So I think um, you'd use that switch if you were going to flash uh, the firmware for a firmware update. You can see we've got a label here, DP666. We've got a um, 5000 milliampere hour, 3.7 volt battery in here. And we've got the serial number of the radio. And just look at the rear panel, there's not much to see on the rear panel. We've just got the, uh, the model number and the um, details of the the manufacturer or supplier, whichever you want to, uh, whichever way you want to look at it. Now, some really unusual things about this uh, radio. Okay, the case. Um, I don't know how robust this case is going to be. It feels quite, quite nice. It's, uh, it's not overly light. It's not overly heavy. It's a nice weight and it's a nice size to hold a radio. But the case is made out of a material. It's like the, the material that they make circuit boards out of, like a PCB, a plastic material. And it's, you can, I don't know if you can see here, it's held in, it's sort of clipped together, the case. So it's not a metal case like the other TEF6686. And it's not a moulded plastic case like the um, Kudos and radios. This is um, a series of uh, PCB boards, really, clipped together. Looks okay, doesn't it? And this radio is available in various colours. Obviously, this one is black. Um, but how robust that case is going to be, I don't know. Um, the other difference with the Silver TEF6686 radio, I'll just hopefully show you quickly. Also, I'll turn the power switch at the bottom to on. And then we'll power up the radio. Okay, nice colour display. Let's turn the volume down there. Um, 
just a little bit bright in here. Another slight issue really with, as I always say, with color displays, they're not the best in bright sunlight. But we have the color display, but this one is also a touch screen. Okay, it's also a touch screen. Um, and we can use um, a keypad there on the radio to um, enter a frequency, I guess. Um, let's try and put a shortwave frequency in. One seven six six zero zero, and we press return, and there we are on the uh, on the band. Hopefully, you can see the screen. Let's see if I can bring the menu. There's the menu. So we've got various adjustments we can uh, do in the menu system. Now we didn't have the touch screen facility in the other TEF6686. I'm sorry about the reflections here. I'll show you this screen um, in dimmer light. It will be a lot better. We'll have a look at that in a moment. So here's a slightly better view of the screen. Okay, we can see the various uh, menu adjustments. Um, if we look at, for example, uh, display settings, go into that and we can set uh, the contrast. We can set a theme. So um, let's just have a look at uh, the themes we can uh, set. I'm not quite sure how we how we select that. Maybe that's it. Um, we can alter the contrast. Let me turn that up a bit there. Might help the um, might help the view in uh, in sunlight. Although um, that's kind of a bit of an issue with these color screens. As I said, uh, press mode to exit. It says so. There we go. So we've altered that theme. Screen's a little bit brighter. Hopefully you can see. Again, there's quite a lot of features, a lot of functions here that um, I'm not sure about at the moment. Um, let's have a look what else we've got. We've got RDS settings here, frequency scanning, connectivity. So it looks like we can connect to uh, Wi-Fi. I'm not quite sure why you want to do that, but there you go. Uh, if you want to do that, you can. Um, AM settings, FM settings, default step sizes and so on. Um, operation settings, rotary address squelch that's turned off at the moment. Looks like we can affect the key presses and what they do. Um, what else have we got? Um, AM settings, let's look at those. So we've got um, shortwave wavelength display. Uh, medium wave step size that's important if you're in North America you want to change that to 10 uh, kilohertz airband conversion um, I not aware that this radio has airband so again that's something that I'm gonna need to look at uh, <clears throat> there doesn't seem to be any airband um, coverage here so if we switch I'm just going to come out of there for a moment. I will check to um, operation settings. There's nothing there about airband. Um, display other settings. Let's have a look there. There's nothing there about airband. So I don't know why airband is mentioned here. Has this radio got airband? I'm not certain that it has. I don't think it has. Uh, let's exit with the mode button. We'll just switch through the bands. I've done it before. Had this radio a couple of days now. So that's medium wave. That's short wave. That's FM. And that's long wave. We're back to medium wave. So, yeah, don't know. Uh, what's this lot down here? Um, I know it's going slightly out of focus as I put the pointer in. Um, that information, I'm not sure what that relates to. All right. So... What we're going to do with this, um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some uh, brief listing I've done with this radio on uh, long wave, medium wave and short wave, okay? Versions of Bob and they are moving at different rates of 
relative to the speed of light, and they have to experience different amounts of time dilation as they try to talk to each other, and then they have... Until April 16th, 5 and 2. Solar flux peaking at 185, April 7th and 8th, and down to 165 by April 21st. We're going to tune it around on FM, but I'll also try it on FM here, but outside um, when the um, the light is a little dimmer in the evening because with the colour display it's going to be impossible for you to see what I'm doing if I took it out today. It's a sunny day. And we'll see how it performs in a barn FM location like I'm in here against the Silver TEF6686 and the Kudosin DX286. And um, we'll see whether this radio is really worth its money because um, if you've seen these deeper X, okay, the DP666 as it's labelled there, they're not the cheapest of radios. And given that it's in this kind of plastic PCB uh, construction, you're paying quite a lot for a radio like this. So I would hope that the performance is going to make it worth the money. Because the build standard, I'm a little bit concerned with how robust and how um, long-lived this type of construction is going to be. I have to say the keypad feels quite nice and the, the buttons. Um, why we had to have a separate um, on-off switch down here as well, I don't know. Okay, little micro switch there. Why we couldn't just have the uh, power on the front or uh, the silver radio actually switched the power on off on the, the volume knob, which was that was fine. So I'm not quite sure why we've got this um, arrangement, but there it is. But you've seen the radio, uh, seen the display, you've seen there's a lot of features. You've obviously seen that I haven't um, had it very long. I still need to learn this bit of a learning curve navigating your way around this one. There's quite a lot of features. There are memories <clears throat> and various things you can switch in and out. So we take a look at all of that and we'll see the radio in action on the next video. So thank you for watching.